Hi everyone, uh, my name is Heather Keene. I'm with the Human Rights Education Institute up in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Um, we were fortunate to hear some of our history from our good friend Tony Stewart. Uh, but just to give you a quick overview, basically we celebrate diversity um, and promote human rights in Kootenai County through education programs, essentially. Um, this ranges, we work a lot, partner with the schools, do a lot in the K-12 through schools um, throughout Kootenai County as well as general community programs partner with our local nonprofits who are also working on human rights types issues. Um, we're just happy to be here and partner with you all in any way possible and just be part of this organization. So thank you. <laughs> My name is Donna Black and I'm an art educator at Pritchard Art Gallery. Uh, what we do is often talk about artists catalysts for change in um, our classroom tours and our projects. Uh, but I also work with First Book, a children's literacy advocate. Um, I'd be interested in talking to the lady from the Trinity Food Bank about getting books into the food bank that families can take back with them with the food. Um, and I'd also be interested in talking to Mrs. Williams about her project, because I bet art and, and literature and stories all go together really, really well. Um, and that's me. <laughs> Uh, hi. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, my name's uh, Jonathan Cannell. I am a local student here at the University of Idaho. I've lived here pretty much all of my life within the area. I was raised in Potlatch. Uh, I'm a member of the Gay Straight Alliance here at the U of I. It's the local club that uh, works to have uh, straight students that are uh, considering themselves allies and uh, other students that uh, have identified through different uh, sexualities to work together and make a better uh, community here at the uh, university. I'm also with the uh, Brotherhood and Poundman Against Rape Club, uh, also known as BEAR, uh, which is working towards uh, getting uh, male students on the university to take ownership of the, uh, the stereotype, or not, I wouldn't say stereotype, but the action of rape that has been attributed to men due to us usually being the ones that cause the action. Um, taking ownership of that, working to change that, and working to make ourselves better people and hold other men responsible for that as well. Uh, also to understand gender equality and gender uh, issues. Um, I'm really a new member of both of these groups and I felt like coming here to this meeting would help uh, uh, make myself a better member of those parts of the community. Uh, I'd also like to say that I'm very honored to be uh, in the presence of so many individuals that are working so hard to make this world and this community, this country, such a better place and such a more equal place for all peoples. So, thank you. I'm a student at Lewis Clark State College, which is really loud. <laughs> I'm um, a social work. I'm in the social work program, and will be graduating in the spring and going on to my master's. But I'm doing my internship right now at the Native American Minority Student Services at Lewis Clark State College, and that's how I got here. My boss forwarded me the email, and I thought it would be really interesting because it does have to do with um, social justice and social policy, and that's really interesting to me because I'm going into social work. So that's it, that's me. Uh, my name is Lisa Rosier. Um, as Tony said, I'm chair of the Human Rights Commission for the city of Spokane. And you probably guessed by my accent, I'm not local. Um, <laughs> I'm originally from Australia. I was born and raised in Australia. And I moved over here when I met my husband, who has a severely disabled son, who has a very rare chromosome disorder. Um, he serves about 50 cases in the world with his disorder, and he's outlived his life expectancy by 20 years. He's now 32, although intellectually he's about 18 months old, and he lives at home with us, so he couldn't immigrate to Australia because of his medical issues, and so I left that my country behind and moved here. But I've always been involved in human rights issues, 
from the time I was a child. I was a child caregiver for my mother who was badly burdened, a house fire. And so I took care of her, went into law enforcement, was in uh, the state police department there for 22 years. Did a lot of work on violence against women, so a lot of the issues that you've raised here, we were doing in the 90s. Reversing stereotypes, um, we worked a lot with the male um, uh, groups from universities, particularly the Blue and White Ribbon Campaign every year, which was um, established as a result of the massacre of the women in the Montreal University, where men got together and marched every November. And I was able to get our male officers, a department of 10,000, to cross the state to start doing that. And we wore blue and white ribbons protesting violence. We also did that on International Women's Day, wearing purple, green and white ribbons protesting violence against women. And it was a big coup for us to get the men in, in the police department to also contribute and to be aware of that and to wear those ribbons. Um, some of the other things that have touched some of the issues that you've raised here that we were able to, to put in place was working with our sex workers or prostitutes in Australia, the more political correct term is sex worker. So we were able to do, we were able to do a lot of work with them and develop sexual assault protocols across the state working with the medical profession, universities, hospitals, police departments, prosecutors, where we've now established protocols that we all know where our role is. So there's no conflict, and particularly working with our advocates in that field. Um, we also um, established a reference group, which is what you're doing here, of uh, at least 40 people from all different backgrounds and diverse communities to look at the information that was going out and make sure it was current and, uh, and that it was, was accurate in developing proactive programs reversing stereotypes. So we never had women walking down a dark alley saying, don't do this, don't go that. We never had domestic violence. And this is in the 90s. We never had domestic violence media where we had a woman cowering. You know, domestic violence is, is illegal or it's bad. Um, I was able to stage a photograph with our newspapers where we had a woman standing in the doorway feeling very empowered and the, the males being let off in handcuffs with his head down by two officers. And so the reversing a lot of those images is very, very important. And it goes along with what Tony was saying. And our philosophy, the motto we had was community, women's safety is a community responsibility. And we had stickers and flies and things like that on cars. And you could do that here. Um, the role that I have now with the Human Rights Commission, you know, we're all volunteers. You know, we've been doing a lot of things like having an umbrella. We developed an umbrella approach. And that umbrella encapsulates everything from um, hate crimes, diversity, um, disability services, um, and, um, and also um, looking at human trafficking as well um, under that umbrella and how we can educate and make recommendations to, uh, to the city. Um, we had a, the company I work for is a non-profit. You've probably heard of it, Skillskin. I'm a, and that was where Otto worked. And um, I, um, I'm a director of supported living there, and we're doing a lot of work trying to get people with disabilities employed. But in the office, I have 60 staff. They represent Ethiopia, India, Pakistan, uh, America, obviously Australia, and uh, quite a few other countries. So I had a diversity potluck. And that might be something you might want to think about in your organization. And everybody brought uh, food. And it was wonderful. It was a great way to bring people together to talk about their culture, to talk about the food. We even had a big stainless steel pot to give to the winner with some ribbons and things like that. And the atmosphere was electric. And Tony and I have actually talked about extending that and having diversity in the park and having diversity pop up in the park. But we'll have it in Spokane one year, we'll have it in Idaho or Coeur d'Alene the next year. So I'm really excited to be a part of this organisation and to share information about what we've done in the past and where we can go in the future. So thank you. Uh, my name is Norman Gissel. Um, I'm born and bred in northern in Idaho. Uh, in uh, 1960, I attended a national fraternity conference. Uh, I was staying in a fraternity up on the hill, Delta Delta. And the hot topic in those days was civil rights and when will we, a racist organization, going to change our national policies 
and um, integrate. And they hemmed and hawed and hemmed and hawed and, and uh, a bunch of us got together and says, we can roll these sags. They don't know what they're talking about. So we're going to integrate anyway and we're going to challenge them. So in 1960, we integrated the Delta Tau Delta fraternity. It was a lot of fun and we never looked back and I've been doing that sort of work ever since. Um, it's and I remember the Cookie County Task Force at the present time. And over time, it was what we did. And then at some point in time, you wake up and that becomes who you are. So I am so fully integrated in human rights that my identity is really completely and totally as a human rights advocate. Hello everyone, my name is Ronnie Oliver, and believe it or not, I'm an ex-Vandal football player. Um, <laughs> that was a while ago, so that was back in the 80s, I played, and I want to say a bad word, but I played on Erickson, I know there's some bad things going on, but um, you know, that's my connection, and uh, how I got up here was a young lady sent an email, I am just now the ex-co-chair of PFLAG's Parents, Families, and Allies, Gay, Lesbian, Transgender, questioning uh, community members in Spokane. And um, I wanted to make sure I just came down and to be a part of this and kind of learn and take back what I can. I also run a supply, diverse, supply diversity program for Purcell Systems. We're like a $100 million company um, in Spokane. So I don't want you to forget about those women, small businesses, uh, women and uh, veteran businesses who are trying to not only thrive but trying to survive in this economy. So make sure that you're keeping them in mind when you're talking about uh, rights and economically being uh, viable. I also have a company, I'm a supply diversity consultant, O2SIC, which is Oliver Supplier Intercultural Competency Consulting. So if you're in need of help in that area, you're more than welcome to help, help you. Thank you very much for helping me, and I learned a lot, and you guys are absolutely amazing people. Thank you. Um, my name is Ken Foss, and I'm the chair of the Moscow Human Rights Commission, and I actually have lost my voice. Uh, so I would ask either Lynn Aid or Carmen to explain what our group is and doing because I don't think I can do that right this month. <laughs> My name is Lynn Eight and I'm with the Moscow City Human Rights Commission as well as with the Laetal County Human Rights Task Force. And um, the commission, you know, I haven't been with it from the beginning, but it's not more than about five or six years old, uh, if I'm um, correct. And um, we provide um, guidance uh, when there are questions of human rights to the City Council, then the Commission will uh, have a discussion and provide uh, a position uh, that they recommend that the Council or the Mayor take, and they may or may not <laughs> take that position, but at least we are able to provide that expertise, as well as um, provide social justice forums. I think Rula mentioned one of them. Uh, we do three or four social justice forums on important topics of equality uh, for the community in terms of public education on a routine basis. Um, and we do also uh, recommend to the mayor um, and uh, every other year uh, a community member to be recognized for a unity, uh, community unity and human rights uh, act, you know, activity in the community. Anything else? The community walk. Oh, yeah. Uh, community Walk, the Community Walk in Moscow is really kind of a separate organization, but the commission does support it financially. Um, the Community Walk is basically an annual event which uh, encourages people in Moscow to walk on common ground regardless of their backgrounds, that at least uh, one day a year we all come together as neighbors in Moscow, regardless of our beliefs or regardless of our values or our wealth or whatever, but for at least one day we all come together walking on common ground in Moscow. I'd like to also say, um, uh, from the point of view of the Laetal County Human Rights Task Force, we recently have a new brochure. So anyone who would like a copy to see uh, what we do, um, 
the, the task force focuses on um, a variety of types of uh, diversity building uh, community activities every year. We do a lot of education, both for the uh, adults, but primarily doing a lot of programs into the schools. As we all know, it's best to start with uh, children when they're young to build their brains moving in the right direction. We do an annual recognition of Community Heroes, our Rosa Parks Award. Um, and um, celebrate diversity in as many ways as we can in terms of supporting other types of rallies and marches. Uh, we always have members there. So anyone who would like to see what we've been doing, feel free to come to the brochure. I didn't quite expect to talk. Um, I have to have you this camp. I'm uh, uh, involved with the Idaho Fair Employment Task Force with Jennifer Whitney, and we're working to add gender identity and sexual orientation to the Idaho Human Rights Law. And I'm also involved with the, I'm the state lead for Get Equal, which is working for full equality uh, in the U.S. in all matters covered by civil law for LGBT people. And uh, I'm a member of the Human Rights Commission. <laughs> so, anyway, that's enough. <laughs>
And for the first time, last two, this past Tuesday, um, principals, teachers, and the winning students and their parents all got together in Plummer for the awards ceremony. It had never happened before, and we're very proud of that. So here's the rest of the, the coalition. Hi. My name is I'm the Marilyn that Tony talked to you about, that with Christina, he took us to lunch, and he paid. <laughs> uh, I, I joined with Christina and the rest of the board on how proud we are. I'm also the uh, Benoit County Veteran Services Officer. As a former Marine, they decided that they needed somebody, and I had also worked with veterans for over 30 years. So. Uh, C combining these is really kind of an interesting thing in the east side of Benoit County. You see, because a lot of the mindset there is flag, God, country, and no human rights, okay? So when they have a veteran that is saying, I come from a kind heart and a gentle soul, and that's the way I expect to be treated, it kind of spins their heads around, and that's okay, you know. Maybe they'll find the center somewhere. <laughs> I'm, I have no idea how loud this is. I'm Jill Wagner. I am the secretary currently for the Human Rights Coalition. When I heard it was happening, I asked to join. I'm also in the Food Coalition, which is seeking food security in Benoit County, despite it being filled with farms. A lot of people are hungry and <coughs> malnourished and overnourished. <laughs> And um, I'm also the Tribes Historic Preservation Officer, and I'd like to talk to Sarah before she fails on. Hi, I'm Barbara Octi. I retired from Casper College, Casper, Wyoming. And uh, I just kind of wanted to get into something. This is near and dear to my heart as well. And I've met so many wonderful people, and I hope that we can continue to do some good work. I'm, I'm Lloyd Aki. I'm uh, vice president of the uh, Benoit Human Rights Coalition. And uh, that was just because they thought I knew more about vice than anybody else. It's, it's these women that did all the work for this contest. So. Hi, I'm Carol Embry, and I'm a resident of St. Mary's. And I am really proud to be part of this group. It's kind of a new thing for me. I'm really not that political, so it's big for me to be part of this, and I'm really proud of our success so far, and I'm a teacher at the St. Mary's Head Start program. Hi there, I'm Jennifer Whitney. I'm going to go over here so I can see everybody. Um, I graduated from U of I in a, with a degree in sociology uh, about a year and a half ago, and uh, inequality is something that I focus a lot on, and I now work for Planned Parenthood Votes Northwest. And so it's interesting because I, I work with a lot of people. I've um, had conversations with people in the room and I was like, wow, I know that person, but I've never seen their face before. So it's kind of great. I, I advocate, I'm a field organizer, and I advocate on behalf of the upper 10 counties of North Idaho. So um, if you want to talk about sexual health and reproductive rights in North Idaho, like I'm the person to talk to. So I work with um, a lot of groups uh, on various campuses and in various communities especially in Lewiston, Moscow, Pullman, also in Coeur d'Alene, and a tiny bit of work in Spokane, uh, <coughs> um, but, but obviously human rights are important, <coughs> discrimination, relationships, anything along those lines, um, Plan Parenthood is involved in. And so I, I would love to get in touch with anybody here and, and chat with any of those types of things. We work with a lot of the groups that have spoken uh, to do events and and raise awareness and create public and create change at the public policy level. So that's really where, where I'm doing. I work with Jim doing the Fair Employment Working Group where we're working to change that Idaho human rights <coughs> movement. So um, hopefully I would love to work with all groups to get a day of action event, maybe in Sandpoint, maybe in Plummer, I would love it. I'm doing one in Coeur d'Alene and Lewiston, Jim's doing one here in Moscow. So we're really trying to create some broad scope change happening across all of Idaho. Um, I want to make one correction to Carla's statement from Odyssey Youth Center, but we actually have an inland oasis 
here in Moscow, which is a, a oh, youth center. Corrected. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm the president of that organization. We are a center, LGBTQ friendly center, trying to do very similar things to what Odyssey's doing, but here in the Moscow area and broader if we can. But definitely want to provide that opportunity for people and partner in any way that we can. I'm just beginning my work in, uh, in advocacy and stuff. I haven't done a lot of things along that regard, but I'm almost ready to graduate with a degree in broadcast media, and I really want to immediately, when I graduate, work on political things uh, that relate to my degree, so I want to make films and stuff for any of you people. <laughs> so, um, yeah. That's that's why I'm here. <laughs>